Hi everyone, Happy New Year and welcome to today's webinar on the Greater Cities Sport Facility Fund. Straight after this session, I will also be hosting a similar webinar for the Regional Sport Facility Fund. Now the Regional Sport Facility Fund is very similar to the Greater Cities Sport Facility Fund. And I do encourage those of you that are interested in regional New South Wales to please join us for this session. The purpose of today is to walk you through the Greater Cities Sport Facility Fund, including the fund objectives, eligibility and guidelines. I am lucky at the Office of Sport to have a fantastic team to support the delivery of this fund and I welcome them on the call today. Now webinars of this size are always a little difficult to manage and I do ask that you play your part in making today's session as successful as possible. As Phil said, please, if you can turn off your microphones and cameras during the main part of today's session, then that will improve the experience for everyone involved. Any questions that you might have as we go through the presentation, then please place those questions into the chat and we will try and answer these for you in the coming days. So here you'll see we have a pretty full agenda. So I will walk you through the details of the fund. I'll also walk you through the application and the assessment process, and of course, the all important timeline. So without further ado, let's get started. The Greater Cities Sport Facility Fund is the overarching fund and it includes two streams. The first is the Greater Cities and the second is Regional New South Wales. Today's session relates to the Greater Cities Facility Fund only. The fund will see the, de the developing of quality sport infrastructure compatible with current and future demand. The projects can include new facilities or improved or refurbished facilities, but most of all, we want to see a positive impact and support for participation and performance in sport across all levels. The New South Wales Government has committed $50 million to the Greater Cities Sport Facility Fund over two years, which means that $25 million will be allocated for each year, including this year. The minimum grant amount is $100,000 and the maximum is $1 million. This means as a minimum, 25 projects will be funded in this round. Now the fund opened on the 21st of December 2020, just before the, the Christmas break, and it will close no later than 5pm on Friday the 26th of February 2021. And you'll hear me mention that date a number of times during, during today's presentation. The objectives of the fund include increasing the number and type of sport facilities, improving the standard of facilities, and increasing sport participation. We aim to increase participation by providing universally designed and innovative facilities and to improve facilities for the people and the communities that need it most. Now to achieve this, we will be focusing on universally designed and functional facilities, improving the utilization of facilities by improving their multi-use capabilities and the adoption of technologies or design initiatives that help improve environmental sustainability. To be eligible for the fund, you must be located in one of the 33 local government areas in Greater Sydney or in Newcastle or Wollongong. You must be a state sporting organisation, state sporting organisation for people with a disability, or a national sporting organisation where the state body is part of a unitary governance model. Incorporated, community-based, not-for-profit sporting organisations whose primary purpose is to, is to deliver sport act activities or programs are also eligible. Organisations that also provide sport and recreation programs such as PCYC, YMCA, YWCA are also eligible, along with organisations that own and administer public parklands. And finally, Private enterprises are also eligible too. Moving on to eligible land types. Now eligible land types include Crown Reserve land, land owned by a public authority, 
land held for public purposes by trustees under a valid lease, title or trust deed that protects the interest of the public land. Land that is invested in the New South Wales Aboriginal Land Councils under the New South Wales Aboriginal Land Rights Act. Private land that benefits the community's interests in sport. Applicants are required to provide a signed letter of consent from the landowner for the project and will need to provide evidence of their tenure and lease arrangements as part of their application. Now a list of eligible and ineligible project components are contained in our guidelines. So please check this, these lists before finalising your applications. It is also important to note that projects must have an approved development application or demonstrate that a development application is not required. This is because we want these projects to be delivered quickly. That is, we really want these projects to be shovel ready and we also want the projects to be completed within two years of signing a funding agreement. Now some of the other requirements that you will need to consider include for projects that cost more than $1 million, a 25% co-contribution of the grant amount requested is required. For all other projects, a co-contribution will be considered favourably. Projects have to commence in 2021 and they need to be completed within two years. Now for projects over 5 million, a statement of support from the relevant state sporting organisation or national sporting organisation is also required. Now that I've spoken about all of the requirements, let's actually talk about the application process. If your project costs less than $5 million, then you will need a detailed project plan to accompany your application. If your project costs more than $5 million, then you will need a business case to accompany your application. To submit your application, you will need to register or search for your organisation through the Office of Sports Grants Online website. You will then need to register your project and complete the application form by filling in each section. Now, once you've done all of that, you're just about ready to hit the submit button, but please make sure that you've included your application, your project plan or business case, and all of your supporting documents. And this needs to be done before 5 p.m. on Friday, the 26th of February, 2021. Once all of the applications have been received, they will undergo an eligibility check, which includes an assessment against the strategic justification of the project, the scope and inclusive design, project affordability, and of course, project deliver, de deliverability. <laughs> An eligibility checklist is also available on our website for those of you that might want to check on your eligibility. Also on our website, we have a number of tools available to assist you in the preparation of your application. This includes program guidelines, there's some fact sheets and some templates, and there's also a number of pro forma documents that you may seek to use. Now, most importantly, if you do have any questions when preparing your application, then please do not hesitate to contact the Office of Sport for assistance. And you can do that by using the email address that's on this slide, which is grantsunit at sport.nsw.gov.au. Now for the all important timeline. As I've said previously, applications close on Friday the 26th of February 2021. We are hoping the assessment process will be completed in the following months and fingers crossed the successful projects will be announced in April 2021. After the successful projects have been announced, we will then need to proceed with funding agreements and those funding agreements will need to be finalised in May and June which then means that projects should be completed by July 2023. So that aligns with our two year project completion requirement. After this, so after completion, a final project report and acquittal will be required. 
Now the next few slides are some typical questions that we have already received here at the Office of Sport and we thought we would just share them with you today. So the first one is around can council submit more than one application? The answer to that question is yes. A council can submit more than one application. In fact, any applicant can submit up to three applications, each requesting up to $1 million. We do, however, ask that if you are submitting multiple applications, then you may wish to actually advise us on what your priorities are. The next question is around submitting applications on behalf of a sporting club. And the answer to that is yes, uh, council can actually submit an application on behalf of a sporting club, but this means that council will be the grant recipient and they will also be responsible for the project. Now the next question is around um, the facility use schedule. And look, for us here at the Office of Sport, the facility use schedule actually assists us in understanding the demand for the facility that your project proposes to either add to or renovate or new facility. And it will also highlight to us the impact of the government investment um, on that demand for that facility. Next question. Yes, for projects costing more than $1 million, a 25% financial co-contribution will be required. For all other projects, a co-contribution will be considered favourably. Now the next question is around letters of support. And I can advise that letters of support are required for projects over $5 million and they should be provided as part of your application and uploaded as part of the supporting documentation to your application. That concludes our presentation today on the Greater Cities Sport Facility Fund. Thank you everybody for your time today and thank you for all your questions that we've received in the chat. Um, we will endeavour to answer your questions in the coming days. So please look out from an, for an email from the Office of Sport or an EDM advising when the, the answers to those questions is available. We look forward to receiving everybody's applications and I remind everybody that your applications are due by Friday the 26th of February at 5pm. Thank you everybody and take care.